with the Xbox 360 Marketplace store set to close on the 29th of July 2024 as I make this video, there are a number of pitfalls and issues you can face when buying Xbox 360 games on any of the Xbox consoles at present and it's time people were made aware of them. Some of these are extremely serious issues that Microsoft need to fix, however if they will, well that's a whole different question. But one thing's for sure, by the end of this video, Phil Spencer, Satya Nadella and Brad Smith will have some very awkward questions to answer. Now I planned to do the script for this video a few days earlier before I put out the Double Dragon 2 arcade playthrough video and boy what a difference those few days ended up making. So hello everyone, my name is Random Gamer Riven, the editor of Randomized Gaming. In this video I will be taking a look at the state of the Xbox 360 store and these days it really isn't in good shape, a bit like the PlayStation 3 store I covered in a previous video. The big news is that Xbox first party exclusives are coming to other platforms in the near future, which in turn is raising the question are Microsoft throwing in the towel as a console maker with Xbox despite having just purchased Activision? Well we'll find out over the next few weeks, months and years it seems. Certainly that could be the main driving force for the shutting down of the Xbox 360 store, as Microsoft don't want to sell games on their consoles anymore and it's looking like they want to become a cloud only service or just a publisher. Which means that to them the Xbox 360, Xbox One and Xbox Series stores are just dead weights. Of course if you're a pure gamer like me this is all bad news as many great games on the Xbox 360 aren't available on other platforms. And to be honest if this is the case then the Xbox Series X is the last console I'll be buying from the company, I'm certainly not interested in gaming via subscription service model myself. The writing has been on the wall for Microsoft for some time and while they achieved a good success with the Xbox 360, sadly all the hard work done building the brand during that period was destroyed by the car crash that was the Xbox One launch. It was so disastrous that the Xbox brand has never recovered from the damage it caused. Now while we can't turn back the clock, all we can do is make the best use of the time we have before the shutdown happens. I can't see the axe being pulled either but I do think they should bring more Xbox and 360 games to Xbox back catalogue. Currently it doesn't support games built using the XNA which is why 360 games like Fez and Dust and Elysian Tale aren't on Xbox One or Series X but both were ported to PlayStation 4 instead. In this video I'll be looking at some of the problems you can face on the Xbox 360 service buying or downloading games and then in the next 360 video we'll do after this I'll be taking a pick of some of the best digital only games to pick up before they are gone. So do start dropping a comment below to which digital only arcade games you would recommend and maybe some of them will feature in our next video. To make things easy for you the viewer I split this video into clear topics and sections breaking all the issues down. Do check out the excellent website Delisted Games, I recently spoke with Sean S who runs the shite about the Xbox 360 store closing and it is a great resource for looking at games that have been delisted. Also please do help raise awareness of this video, YouTube is getting quite bad at recommending videos and even searching them. Please do share it around as the more people that watch it the more chance we have of Microsoft addressing some or all of the issues raised here. Number 1 3 DLC compatibility packs and fixes needed for games. So the most important issue I need to raise is games with 3 compatibility and patch downloads content. Now we touched on this in the previous video but I'm going to go into a bit more detail here and list a number of key games. Now on the PlayStation 3 all titles apart from a few early ones will check for an update on starting the game and download the patches available. Unlike the Xbox 360 there isn't a size limit on PS3 patches so you can get patches that were well over a gigabyte in size or larger. Having recently installed and patched Gran Turismo 6 on the system 
I had the joy of the whole process taking well over 4 hours due to the amount of downloads. Unfortunately in the Xbox 360's case patches were limited in size which resulted in some games having to have free updates and online compatibility patches added to the store as download items as they were too large to be installed via the Xbox 360 patching system which in the early days had a size limit of between 4 to 6 megabytes. Now that we know the store is being terminated on July 29th 2024 this means those key free DLC packs and patches will no longer be available for download so you need to grab them now from the store before it closes. While many of these downloads are purely for online play, for some games like Soul Calibur 5, these packs have already been delisted. In those cases if you didn't download them you may have trouble now matching online with players who have the DLC. Some titles like the Xbox Live Arcade game Guilty Gear XX Accent Core Plus had a 3 game upgrade. In this case there was a 3 download in the shop that was over 200 megabytes that upgraded the game to the Guilty Gear XX Accent Core Plus R revision. Another Arc System Work game BlazBlue Continuum Shift also had 3 revision upgrade DLCs that were linked to the extra download characters. There was also an upgraded version of the game called BlazBlue Continuum Shift Extend which included all the DLC and an additional character but the Extend revision is classed as a separate game for achievements and trophies. The rather buggy Test Drive Unlimited 2 was another game where all the game's updates and DLCs were via 4.3 downloads in the shop. Both Armored Core Verdict's Day and Dark Souls 2 from From Software also feature 3 DLC updates to both use and play online with the latest DLC. It should be noted that From Software recently decided they couldn't wait to kill the online support for both games. This means that on March 31st 2024 before the store closes both games will have their online shut down. In Armour Core's verdict day that means that some of the DLC won't work as it was intended for the online mode which as we discussed in our last video is a large part of the game. Assassin's Creed Brotherhood and Mortal Kombat 9 which was just called Mortal Kombat both have online packs. Both games also don't show up in the alphabet listing so you will have to use the search function to find them. I should note only the compatibility packs are still up for download for Mortal Kombat. The paid DLC was delisted some years back due to them including licensed characters in the game, something I personally hate. There is however a complete edition released with all the DLC on disc and some extra content over the standard version but if you own the standard version make sure to grab the packs for online play. However to be brutally honest with the paid DLC and game now delisted players should invest in a copy of the complete edition as the price of that version will only rise. Keep in mind the PlayStation 3 version has an extra character and stage in the form of Kratos from the God of War series. Sleeping Dogs and Mass Effect 3 free DLCs are covered in the previous video we did. You will also need to make sure you get the online packs as well for Mass Effect 3 for the Xbox 360 version but its online days are likely numbered now. Other games that include online packs and free DLCs are Dead or Alive 5, Battlefield 3, Borderlands 2, Need for Speed, Most Wanted, Need for Speed Rivals and I think the now delisted Burnout Paradise did as well. A few games like Borderlands 2 have Game of the Year editions but even that release didn't include all the 360 DLC. However that also got a HD update on Xbox One and PlayStation 4 with all the DLC included. I've likely missed a few games so if you know of any I haven't mentioned please do leave a comment below. On top of compatibility packs a lot of games do have the odd 3 DLCs like costumes, maps or mode. One example is the 3 DLC for the first Worms game released on the system and it goes without saying if you are someone who plays 360 games for achievements make sure to grab all the relevant DLCs for games that add in achievements before they are gone. Number 2 Buying Games on the Service Now Another headache if you plan to buy games on the 360 
is that here in the United Kingdom, Microsoft have broken or removed the account link between the card function system on Xbox One, Series X, Xbox website and Xbox 360. So if you have a credit or debit card on your account, it no longer appears on your Xbox 360. What this means is that if you add a card to your main account, the Xbox 360 can't see it to make purchases. In fact, even when we tried to add a card, more recently it still didn't seem to work. So the only way I found to add funds to the account is via the account balance. To do this on Xbox, you need to purchase a gift card from a retailer, then redeem the card on an Xbox One, Series X or the website to add the funds to your account, as newer gift cards can no longer be redeemed on Xbox 360. This seems to be a change made by Microsoft that they have provided very little details on. Now this change may only apply to certain regions, but do be aware of this. Unlike Sony, you can't just add funds to your wallet. You can also redeem Xbox account points for bonus credits. Buying from the old Xbox 360 Marketplace website seems very hit and miss, with many users having to try multiple times to buy one item as often you get a failed message. I found the in-console 360 store the best way to buy content at present. Do keep in mind this is all subject to change as based on the number of problems Microsoft seem to have had with the Xbox 360 Live of late, don't leave buying games for the last day or two as I suspect the service may melt down in late July and they ain't going to fix it if that happens. Number 3 Season Pass Make sure to download the content if you own it. If you've ever purchased a Season Pass, make sure you have directly downloaded the content it provided. Many games with the Season Pass didn't add the DLC to your account at first and don't show as purchased in the store or available for download. Instead you need to download them directly inside the game before you can play and access them from your account. In some cases it may be the case that the DLC isn't added to your account via the Season Pass even if you do own it. If that is the case, I recommend you make a USB backup to an external device. Just as a reminder, support for USB devices was added in a later update for 360, so do update your Xbox 360 firmware if needed. If you've ever purchased a season pass and then not downloaded the content, make sure you do so now before the store closes, else you will lose access to the content. In one of my cases, I noticed that the Season Pass DLC shows up as not available to download anymore in my account history, which is deeply concerning. Number 4. Games you own, not downloading. Right now, this is the really big one and a major issue with Xbox 360 that breaks United Kingdom consumer law. A handful of titles on the service won't download despite the fact that you own them on the platform. To show this in action, I'll be downloading my digital copy of The Blob 2 here in the United Kingdom, which I got from Games With Gold. Now, this downloads fine on the Xbox One, but not the Xbox 360, and it was suggested that with a number of games the link between the 360 and One was incorrectly set up, so it only download to the Xbox One. I'm going to speed up the download, but as you can see from the store screen it shows as purchased and ready to download. Now, something many users may not be aware of is the fact that the download counter is a bit broken these days and no longer correctly tracks the downloads. As a result, most games will now complete when the counter says 80%. It no longer goes to 100%, so I want you to watch what happens when it hits 80%. Now I'm not sure if the counter bug is caused by the size of my 360 profile, as that 250,000 gamer score and over 200 megs in size these days, my 360 dash is extremely slow. The profile size is partly due to the fact many games save to the profile instead of the hard drive and don't make it clear they're doing so. The trouble is this bloats the profile over time makes the 360 slower and slower. I've heard when you have even larger profiles such as 1 million gamers score plus then your profile can start corrupting itself on the 360 requiring you to re-download it. Now while this was downloading, I subjected myself to the horrors of the Xbox 360 version of Altered Beast and unlocked all the achievements on it, 
I also tried twice for this video and have tried numerous times before they all failed to download. As we watch the counter slowly ticking up, quick plug for the channel, thanks for watching and please do like and subscribe to us here at Randomised Gaming. You can also follow us on Twitter at rdmdgaming and follow me directly at rdgamerrhythm. You can also find us at Twitch under the name Randomised underscore gaming, that's randomised with an S. And finally you can support us on Ko-fi as well if you want. Super thanks are also available on YouTube. Please do leave a comment below if you want to join in on the discussion or if you know something that could add to this video. I'll leave links in the description below. Please do share, repost and tweet about this video after watching it as the more people this reaches the more chance we have of Microsoft fixing some of the issues raised in it. Now just to give you an idea of my age, the music that I feel perfectly fits this section of the video is a theme often used by the UK comedian Benny Hill. The song in question is called Yakety Sax by an American musician Homer Louise Randolph III, also known as Boots Randolph. And while for licensing issues I can't include it in the video, but you can search for a recording of this song on YouTube and play it in the background and I'll link to a video below too. Once it hits 79% you'll see the problem, so let's see what happens. Yes, there it goes, it resets the download and restarts again, turning it into an infinite loop. What this shows is for some reason it can't get the confirmation key at the end of the download, so there is no way for me to download this on the Xbox 360. Just for fun, here is me trying again just to show you how much of my time Microsoft enjoys wasting. My only advice for this is to say don't attempt to buy the digital version of Deblob 2 on Xbox 360 in the United Kingdom until this issue is fixed. But as it's been happening for years now, that seems unlikely. If you have an issue with the game not downloading on 360, please do say so in the comments and state what region and country you are from as well. We had a commenter in our previous video saying they couldn't download the digital version of Saints Row Gat Out of Hell but I expect there to be more. It's not uncommon for a download to sometimes fail the once and succeed the second time, but on my connection speed, this should have downloaded in around 30 minutes based on its size. One thing to note is that the 360 download speed does seem to be throttled these days. Number five, content you own, not showing that you own it. On the flip side of the previous issue is some content you purchase won't show up that you own it in any of the stores. As is the case for the download decimator map pack for Command and Conquer Red Alert 3 as I'm showing here. If you purchase this DLC it will only show up in your Xbox 360 download history for download. It will not show that you own the item in the Xbox 360 store or the Xbox One store. While the DLC works and can be downloaded on the Xbox 360 via your account, it cannot be downloaded on your Xbox One if you go to the game and select Manage Add-ons. It will not show up and cannot be installed. So right now don't even attempt to buy this DLC if you only have an Xbox One. It's just broken for download and this breaks the Consumer Rights Act of 2015 here in the United Kingdom. As section 42 paragraph 2 states if the digital content does not conform to the contract you have the rights to a repair, replacement or price reduction. I think it's time Microsoft and EA got working on that repair to make sure the content download works here in the United Kingdom on Xbox One. 
as you can see from the footage I have recorded I have the same problem, I cannot download this add-on on the Xbox One. Number 6. Showing as content not available in 360 download history. To quote the excellent Delisted Games website, even in the age of digital, nothing lasts forever. Which is true, that even applies to your Xbox 360 download list, as some of your past downloads may show up as content not available now in your download history. When this happens, click on the item to see what happens next. Sometimes it will bring up the downloading question if you are lucky, Blob 2 does this. Other times it will just show an error message. We have a block of these at one point in our download history and we think it might be the DLC for one of the Need for Speed games, maybe Shift 1 or 2 which we can no longer download. I'm not entirely sure and I'm going to have to check what it is. It could also be avatar or profile items or so. Alarmingly we've heard of this happening for XBLA games as well and the trouble is if this happens with an early 360 games you won't have a transaction of the purchase as originally you didn't buy the games you just bought the points to buy the games and those early emails just confirmed you buying points. One gamer we spoke to had this happen to the 1989 Turtles XBLA game and couldn't get it back as a result after contacting Microsoft support as the early receipts only confirm when you bought points, not what you spent them on. Number 7. Xbox original games being purchased on Xbox One not appearing on Xbox 360. Here's a fun issue and one that had a member of Xbox support claiming to me over the phone this was not an issue. Some original Xbox games when purchased via the Xbox One store will not show as you owning them on the Xbox 360 store or in your download history. Which means you can't download them on the 360 and if you attempt to buy them on the 360 when you already own them on Xbox One, the store will crash as the account sees you owning the game already. Speaking to a member of the Ramilla forum that tried that with Ninja Gaiden Black, they got charged trying to rebuy it on the Xbox 360 but weren't given the game and ended up having to contact support who had to erase the game from their Xbox profile entirely before they were then told to buy it on Xbox 360 to get it on both. Nice one Phil, any chance of a fix? It goes without saying if you buy it from the Xbox 360 store you will get it on Xbox One as well, however the issue here is when buying some Xbox original games via the Xbox One and Series X stores. You should get it on the 360 as well but sometimes you don't. In my case the game in question is Jade Empire on the original Xbox. A few months ago it was up for sale at £3 on Xbox One. On the 360 store no discounts now occur even if the game is on sale on the Xbox One and at present on 360 it costs just over £8. On the same day I also purchased a 360 version of Joust via the Xbox One store and that was added to my 360 account. Here is my Xbox One history and as you can see Jade Empire and Joust are next to one another. Now if we jump to my Xbox 360 history we can see that only Joust shows despite me owning both and both being supported on the 360. On contacting Xbox support over the phone I had the phone put down on me and the rep denied it was a problem. It really was a North Star experience for a bug Microsoft needs to fix. Added to this is the fact that the digital version of Jade Empire doesn't come with the free DLC that you got with the limited edition version of the game, just adds insult to injury. Well I say download content, what it was is dislock content that is on the base game disc that required an unlock key on the bonus disc with the limited edition version of Jade Empire on the Xbox to unlock, which allowed you to access the Monk Zen character. The limited edition bonus disc is supported on the Xbox 360 if you have an actual disc but not the Xbox One or Series X, while the bonus disc includes some video content from G4 that might have licensing issues now, the DLC won't have those issues and there is no reason it can't be included in the digital Xbox One and 360 versions. 
To be honest, I suspect Microsoft forgot about the Monk Zen content for Jade Empire when they added it to the back catalogue and should do an update to the digital image for the Xbox 360 and Xbox One Series X versions to include Monk Zen. I have no idea if the original bonus disc works with the digital version of the game, so if anyone knows, please get in touch. As it stands, Monk Zen can only be used on the original Xbox and Xbox 360 consoles. So in effect, if you buy the digital version of Jade Empire on Xbox One or Series X, you really are losing out. Other games that have been reported to us with this issue, if you buy them on the Xbox One store, are Temco's Ninja Gaiden Black and the first person shooter Black by Criterion Games. I had a few people contact me to confirm this information, but please let me know if you know of any other games and we can make an Xbox Hall of Shame list. Xbox original Indiana Jones and the Emperor's Tomb was also reported to have the same issue for some, but has since been delisted from the service. Alongside another LucasArts game, Armed and Dangerous, on the Xbox, which seems somewhat odd. Other original Xbox games delisted include Sphinx and the Cursed Mummy, Prince of Persia The Sands of Time, Tom Clancy's Splinter Cell, Tom Clancy's Splinter Cell Pandora's Tomorrow, Tom Clancy's Splinter Cell Double Agents, that's the Xbox version which is a different game and some might say better game to the 360 one. Oddly enough Tom Clancy's Splinter Cell Chaos Theory is the only one of the original Xbox games still up. Unreal Championship 2, The Lyandry Conflict, has also been delisted. This is likely due to the fact Raiden from Mortal Kombat featured in it, making the game a licensing deal between Epic Games and Warner Brothers these days. Microsoft and Rare even had the cheek to delist the Xbox original version of Grabbed by the Ghoulies. This backcap version was the only version of the game to support 4K resolution, even if it did so at 4x3 ratio. The remaster version included in Rare Replay had added widescreen support but only supported 1080p and on a 4K TV I could clearly see the difference. There was clear jagged edges on the Rare Replay version so it's a personal pick which version is best. As of the time of writing if you want to play the Xbox version of any of these delisted games I've spoken about, if you don't already own them digitally is to have an original Xbox retail disc assuming your console has a disk drive as you can't do this if you own an Xbox Series S which doesn't have one unless Microsoft to decide to release a separate disk drive add-on. Number 8 Xbox 360 games listed on Xbox One that can't be bought. Oh this is a fun one, some DLC listed on the Xbox One and Series X can't be purchased on the newer system storefront, it will just error and you will need to buy them on the Xbox 360 store instead. I did discuss this in my previous video but want to raise it again as it needs fixing as I'm seeing report in 2024 of it still occurring. This happened to me with the Elder Scrolls 4 Oblivion the Wizard's Tower DLC on Xbox One and at present it still is happening so Bethesda and Microsoft need to pull their fingers out of their ears and get it sorted. As come July, this DLC will be stuck in a strange delisted state. Number 9 Content not showing up in store listings and needs to be searched for. Much like the PlayStation 3 store that we covered in a previous video that shows the sorry state of it, some Xbox 360 content no longer shows up in the A to Z listings of the Xbox 360 digital store and only shows up if you use the search feature or if you head over to the Xbox 360 Marketplace website. One such example is the XBLA release of the 1982 arcade game Tron in the UK store. It just seems to have gone walkabouts from the main listing and only shows up in the search and trust me when I say there are quite a few listings for the name Tron. Its sequel Discs of Tron is still listed and is playable on Xbox One. It seems odd that Discs of Tron is playable on the one and not the original arcade game as both were done by Digital Eclipse and you'd have thought they'd been ported together at the same time to the Xbox One. I'm wondering if Microsoft and Disney forgot to add the original Tron to Xbox One. As mentioned earlier both Assassin's Creed Brotherhood's DLC and Mortal Kombat 9's 3 DLC don't show in the A to Z either. If you know of anything else only showing in search, drop us a message or comment below. 
Number 10, digital only retail releases in Europe. This is a quick one, but important one. A couple of Xbox 360 retail games here in Europe didn't get a retail release, but they did get a digital release. The only two titles in Europe I'm aware of that got this treatment are two excellent arcade shooter titles, Call the Riss and Shooting Love 2000 and X. Call the Wrist did get a revamped release on PlayStation 4, but not on Xbox sadly. Neither of these games work on the Xbox One or Series X consoles. Number 11, Xbox 360, Forza Horizon 2, DLC and other redemption codes. So if you have any remaining and supposedly still working Xbox 360 download codes for download content, now is the time to try and redeem them and see if they still work. However, I'm not entirely sure if the Xbox 360 live code service has been turned off. If you have recently used a code on Xbox 360, do let us know if it worked or not. As a word of warning, Microsoft are removing codes from the Xbox One and Series SX store, even if they didn't have an expiry date, as we here at Randomized Gaming found out recently with Forza Horizon 2. Do watch out for this, some people still sell codes for the Storm Island or the Porsche bonus car pack DLCs, as these were sold on cards in shops. These will most likely no longer work if you try and redeem them. It's fair to say Microsoft Playground Games and Turn 10 Studios have totally dropped the ball on the Forza series, releasing unfinished games on launch, stocked full of bugs these days. It's a real shame, seeing as the series started so strong. The always online Forza 7 is one game I won't be buying. The shutdown of the earlier Forza Horizons games and unwillingness to patch the game to fix broken DLC and pulling of all the DLC content just adds to that factor. If you've worked on any of these games you should really hang your head in shame until all the content is relisted and online functions converted to offline supported modes where needed or convert to host and client online as a backup for when the servers go. No single player game should be online only. Number 12, can't set both an Xbox One, current gen and Xbox Series XS, next gen as a home console at the same time. While we are giving Microsoft somewhat of a bruising, let's throw some more fuel on the fire, shall we? Something I'm not sure how many people are aware of is that Microsoft only allow you to have one home console which is the master console for all your download content. Only the home console can play digital games offline. However, despite supposedly being two different console generations, the Xbox One and Xbox Series SX are currently classed as the same console for the home console system. The fact that the Xbox Series consoles use the same HUD and OS system as the Xbox One makes me wonder if the Xbox Series is the same console as the one just with upgraded hardware components. Only accounts on the home console can see your DLC so any sub accounts on the non-home console won't be able to access your download content. This issue means you can't play an Xbox One game at the same time you play an Xbox Series X game on your account as it will kick you off one or the other console. So if you have friends over and want to play the One and Series X at the same time or let your kids play a game or DLC linked to your account on another console you are out of luck. This is something you could do on the 360 and One however you just couldn't both play 360 games on the same account at the same time. It had to be a 360 game and an Xbox One game. The only workaround at present is to go offline on one of the consoles and on the non-home console you can only play retail discs. Considering the cost of these consoles it's fair to say you should be allowed one home console for each generation of Xbox consoles. Sony for example does allow you to set one PlayStation 3, 4 and 5 console as a primary for each generation, which Microsoft does not. This is a poor service from Microsoft and needs to be addressed. 
Number 13, Bethesda Account System and Rage 2 DLC. With Microsoft owning both Bethesda and ZeniMax, it's only fair we continue the issue raising. So let's talk about the rubbish that is Bethesda Accounts. If you own Doom, Quake or Quake 2 on the Xbox One, Switch or PlayStation 4 and 5, Despite the promise of free DLC for these games, many of them don't mention the fact that you require a Bethesda account to download that DLC content. Why you need a Bethesda account to download them is another question altogether, and again this raises questions about the Consumer Act here in the United Kingdom, as extra DLC shouldn't require an additional account to download and in the case of Rage 2, you have to purchase the extra DLC via an in-game Bethesda account using an in-game paid-for currency called Rage Coins. Bethesda also keeps changing how the accounts work, so currently secondary accounts on your console can't access the free DLC content unless they too have a linked Bethesda account. Rage 2 also only allows you to purchase the in-game currency Rage Coins via the Xbox Store. What's more, if you purchase any paid for Bethesda account DLC, then no other user on the console can use it, as it's directly linked to your Bethesda account and not your Xbox One. One of my secondary accounts which didn't have a linked Bethesda account couldn't even access the deluxe DLC I bought from the Xbox Store on my home console. As the Rage 2 expansion DLCs are tied to Bethesda accounts, it means the DLC could be delisted from sale as and when they shut down the Bethesda account system. And it doesn't appear in your Xbox download history either, as you aren't buying it from the Xbox store, meaning it can't be easily re-downloaded and if Bethesda turn off the servers, your paid for DLC is gone, which is not that far away from what Bungie did with paid for Destiny 2 DLC when they yanked it from game and then they wondered why no one is playing Destiny 2 now. All I'll say about Destiny 2 is until Bungie restores the paid for content they decided to remove, I won't be playing it again. The Rage Coin Currency As you can guess, the amount of coins you can buy doesn't match the price of many of the items in the store. You're only allowed to purchase them in amounts of 500, 1,100, 2,500 and 4,500 in the Xbox Store and the price of the items in the Bethesda Account Store is very different. I had to shell out £16 in Rage Coins to get the two expansions in the Terramania Deluxe Pack. It's also designed to squeeze extra cash out of customers and as a word of warning, the Doom BFG 9000 weapon is only available via the Deluxe Edition of the game or its upgrade pack. Microtransactions in a single player game really are something I would only expect a morally bankrupt company to do. So id Software and Bethesda Softworks can hang their heads in shame on this one until they fix it and move the DLC to the main Xbox store. For this video I decided to buy the Terramania Deluxe Pack from the in-game shop and I found a rather interesting bug. After buying the pack and exiting the Bethesda in-game store, I had 750 Rage Coins left over from the 2,500 coins I purchased. I played the game for a bit, checking the DLC was showing and then decided to return to the in-game store. On returning, I found that my 750 remaining coins had been changed to zero coins and it wasn't letting me buy anything. Only after I quit the game and rebooted it, did my coins luckily return? That to me is an extremely serious bug. As a former games QA tester, that is not the type of issue that should be in a game like this and to be honest it's always likely to happen when you have multiple accounts talking to one another. So if Bethesda account is how Bethesda want to do their mod DLC for Elder Scrolls then I won't be buying their DLC in future. Right, so that's it for Xbox issues, the unlucky list of 13 problems for Microsoft they need to sort out. 
but it won't be fair if we don't give some quick balance to this video by looking at some of the problems on PlayStation and Switch. Number unknown, Xbox indie games not booting on Xbox 360. Okay, so it seems 13 really was an unlucky number for Microsoft as while I was putting the last of this video together, having recorded all the voiceover, I was capturing some final footage I needed for this video and I decided I might capture some footage from an Xbox 360 indie game. So I decided to play the excellent Hypertensu as I never recorded footage of it before. All the background footage you see here is live captures by myself using original games and hardware because that's required under Fair Dealing's law. After starting it, I was greeted with this message, which returned me back to the dash. Then I tried another indie game and got the same message again and again. Turns out Microsoft, in some of the recent fixes to Xbox Live, broke the indie game's launcher. Now there is a workaround and I saw a video and Reddit thread by a channel called Big Boopers that explains how to get it to work. I'll link to his video in the description. The short answer is you have to log out of Xbox Live while running the game. The way indie games work is you have to connect to Xbox Live to run them. The problem is being connected to Xbox Live is what appears to be causing the issue. So what you have to do, as shown here, is to make sure you are connected to Live and press A to launch the game. You want to play. As soon as you do that, press and bring up the guide button. When the guide appears, if you are fast enough, you can see the point. The guide will switch from online to offline for a brief moment. So you are looking for the guide to stop showing your friends count and instead change to connect to Xbox Live. When that happens, then it is now safe to sign out of your account by pressing the X button. The indie game will start to boot. Now you must wait until the indie game has fully started so that you reach the title screen of the game in question. Once that happens, you are safe to sign back into your account and you should be able to play the game in question. I confirm this method works with the games I tried it. I have no idea if it works with all indie games. Here's me playing Hypotensu, which is a game about samurai blocks chopping one another up and a bit of Aquilibrium, which was a renamed port of Cataclysm on the Acorn Archimedes. And it's a great little puzzle game. Number 14, Sony PlayStation. Sony still haven't fixed the CMOS battery issue in the PlayStation 3 and still need to do this. Currently I need to replace the battery in my PlayStation 3 as it died after 12 years of use and suffers from this issue. If you haven't heard, when the CMOS battery dies in your console it won't allow you to play any download content, be it games or add-on, and will throw an error message when you attempt to use them. This is due to the fact it can no longer save your authentication keys for your account. If you log into PSN then it will re-download these keys on sign-in and it will keep the keys in memory until you power off and unplug the console at the mains. Which is far from ideal with the huge recent inflation hike in the UK largely caused by the increase in the energy prices in 2022 and 2023. Which saw the whole of the UK facing double or even triple energy bills. Leaving console plugged in and turned on all the time is the last thing people should be doing in this current climate. Also, a while back I did a video on some of the many issues you can have when buying games in the PlayStation 3 store. And there's also the fact that Sony broke the feature that allowed you to download games on your PlayStation 3 and then move them to your PSP or PS Vita via an update and kept quiet on it. Number 15, Nintendo. As for Nintendo, well, they are even less interested in supporting the consumer than Sony or Microsoft, it seems. I've already covered the 3DS and Wii U stores closing last year and the Wii shop before that in separate videos. This year, Nintendo finishes off the job by closing the online game servers for good at the start of April for Wii U and 3DS games. 
On the Switch, we have issues with the build quality like the Joy-Con drift and the console as a whole feeling cheaply made. Retro games are locked to online only subscription services and the system doesn't inform you when new patches are available for a game. Least it should do is flash an icon by the name of a game in the menu when updates are available. The shop is also terrible, no proper sort functions, so trying to find older games in it is an absolute nightmare unless you search for them directly. It really needs an alphabet listing by letters as there are so many games listed in the Switch store these days, even exploring it is impossible. Some sales have 2000 plus games on sale and the page for sales on the Switch just can't show them all. All their store architect needs a major redesign to better help consumers when looking and buying titles in the eShop. Right ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching. That is where I will end this video. None of these games companies are even remotely close to Saints. Gone are the days Animal Crossing was packed full of bonus NES games and where companies made three promotional games to thank fans for buying their titles like Christmas Nights. Microsoft do need to do better as do our respective lawmakers. Technology companies are flying roughshod over consumer law, largely as the lawmakers are about 20 years behind what's currently happening. As I mentioned earlier, do share this video out there as the more eyes on it, the more chance of action by Microsoft to fix the issues raised. However, with Microsoft letting go of their retail team and axing the Xbox Series X model with the CD drive and releasing their games on other platforms, it does look like the end of the road for Xbox consoles and Microsoft will slowly become just a publisher. Mind you, they aren't off to a great start by letting go of all the Activision Blizzard staff at the start of the year, many of whom who were at the top of their field, hence why they were so successful. Word of advice to Microsoft, if you just look at the numbers, you are missing the bigger picture. So Phil Spencer, hang your head in shame. So the ball is now in Phil Spencer's and Microsoft's court. So to speak, will they address any of these issues? I don't know. But the more they address, the more they will regain my respect back. But unless they produce a disk drive for their new system, I won't be buying any future Xbox consoles and any service that only allows me to rent the full price games I'm paying for can take a running jump off a cliff. Same goes for online only operating systems on PC that require a Microsoft account to use, as if you lose your internet connection you are locked out of your PC. Thanks for watching this video, as always do hit that like button, subscribe to the channel and you can hit the bell button for more notifications. Follow us on Twitter, Twitch etc and you can support us via Super Chats on YouTube or via Ko-fi. Do leave a comment if you found this video useful. Our next Xbox video which will be in a week or two will cover some of the best XBLA games being removed that aren't available via back catalogue, so stay tuned for that. In the meantime, I have been the editor of Randomised Gaming, Random Gamer Riven, wishing you a good morning, afternoon, evening or night, wherever you are in the world today.